Mr. Beck, I'm talking with Joan Hackett and David Niven, who just discovered that they have the same birthday. Same day. This is ridiculous. No wonder I always get you too confused. <laughs> there is something to this astrology or whatever. No, I would have done the same thing with the general. You see, it's, it's the same. It's absolutely, uh, no. would have done the same. Well, the six and a half years of misery before that. Where do you go from here? What, what's next for I'm, you besides uh, the film? I'm uh, off to. Um, I go tonight. In fact, any minute to France again. I came there from two days ago. Yeah. I'm going to a wedding uh, on the island of Jersey. Oh. Huh. Anyone we know? Well, actually, it's a, a wedding of some gorillas. G-O or G-U-E-R? G-O. Really? Real, real gorillas. And, and, and it's not a gag. What, what it is is that they're having a convention on the island of Jersey of, of um, not gorillas, of, of uh, <laughs> 250 um, wildlife preservationists from all over the world are going there. It's oh, really yes. rather Are you going to go to there? Yes, and they're oh, finally trying to get together to find out what they uh, They get all their societies and everything together to really hope because uh, how many... 3,000 species have been wiped out in the last 50 years, and 250 are doomed if, they, if something's not done in the next two or three years. What, mm -hmm. what can o normal, ordinary people do? Well, uh, this is not why I'm here to say, to contribute, but there is the, you know, the Worldwide Wildlife Fund, which one can always help with. But anyway, so they've got all these people there, and um, You're trying to get the they've got two as well. female gorillas uh, on the island of Jersey, and they're importing an immense male gorilla from... from um, uh, Baal Zoo in Switzerland, and they asked me to be best man at the wedding, and I'm, 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 <laughs> so I'm going to do that, and, and uh, I don't have to kiss the bride, I, I hope I do. Really <laughs> Will it be a traditional ceremony? Or, uh, well, how, I'm, I'm going to put on the whole lot, I'm going to put on the, the same, and my son is furious, the last time I wore it, I wore it at his, at his wedding, oh. so he's rather depressed about that, but anyway, there were two girls and one man, it's, you know, the permissive society, best, that's all right. Are they going to try to, they're going to try to breed them? And, uh, oh, yes. Yeah. and be them, uh, read them under c controlled circumstances. But I mean, when you think that... Uh, am I being a bore about this? Thing? No. But if you, when you think that, that, that the, the American eagle, the, the, the bald eagle, as it's called, mm -hmm. in, I mean, in a tiny number of years, is going to be extinct. And it's absolutely yeah. horrifying that something is done that in this great country, that there it is that some child will say, in the few years, to his father, what is that funny-looking bird on the one-dollar bill, you know? And the father's going to say, well, it's, uh, I don't know, it's before my time. It's I terrifying. Know, that is so depressing. Awful. Oh, right. um, and, you know, with factories getting bigger and skyscrapers getting larger, what little there is left of the, of the earth, we must have wild animals preserved on it to give us a little peace and quiet, I think, to give us something to look at and learn from. What got you interested in this in the first place? I don't, I don't know. I think, honestly, because um, I used to do... Um, wildfowling, you know, this sounds so awful, shooting, talking the way I've been talking about preservation and also shooting, but I used to shoot wildfowl, wild duck and wild geese, and it's, when you do that, it's not a slaughter because it's controlled. Mm -hmm. So many are allowed to be shot and have to be shot to keep the herds and, 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 and the flocks in the right proportions. And when you fall in love with nature like that, that you want to preserve it, really. And it's getting up at two o'clock in the morning and going out on those marshes and and watching them, really, and never hitting anything. If people never were, would animals really not take care of that? I've, I'm always told by deer hunters that, well, why, you'd be up to your what's this and deer. And I, I can hardly believe well, it's not, it. No, not really, because you see the elephant herds, for instance, when the elephants really breed, and they breed like mad, like rabbits, to coin a phrase, the elephants destroy so much green that other, anim other animals can't feed. I mean, they have ah, to be so kept down. so it is down. in Africa rather than they have Montana. To be kept down. But it's, yes, the elephants are not too many in Montana at the moment. But, <laughs> but uh, it's, anyway, it's a big subject. There's not an overpopulation of elephants now, is there? No, they keep them down. They're very, very carefully controlled, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, it's amazing how many hunters cannot hunt anymore. They, I oh, I know, I can't. I, I, couldn't shoot a, I couldn't shoot a pheasant or anything. trophies on the wall that they... No. They keep the there just birds. to remind them of that, that, that they shouldn't have taken that animal and that I there aren't going to be very many. But the songbirds that are killed off in, in Italy is tragic. I live in France, and Italy is only actually 20 minutes away from where we live, and, and um, they shoot thrushes. I mean, they just eat them and they make paste of them. It's unbelievable. There are hardly any thrushes left. Have you heard anything about the whaling uh, problems over there? The, the well, yes, indeed. I mean, they're, they're trying terribly hard to control that, but then these immense factory ships from Russia go to the to the South Atlantic, and they boil them down right there, and, and it's, it's, it's appalling, really appalling, the factory ships. And it's the oldest thing of farming, really. The, the, oldest, the oldest farmers in the world learned to, to keep the best seed, to replant it for the next season, didn't they? So they ate again. And it's the same with fish. Unless we 
control the fishing, there won't be any fishing. You have the factory ship problem in Europe as well as... Uh, well, they come, they come from Russia. They're, they're right off Long them. Island here, yeah, the yeah. Russian trawl, those giant factory ships. They, they actually do everything, including can the, the, the yeah. stuff well, on the ship. Right and they are decimating the fishing around here. Yeah, Apparently, for some stupid reason, we can't get the limit put out farther to, so that they have to stay out of ways. They're ruining the lobstering, they're ruining the fishing. They're just wiping out the... No discrimination about what uh, sh what fish they take and what they don't take. And the oil, yeah. the oil that comes pumping out of those, those. I mean, it's frightening to think that, that the, for the price of one bomber that's showering bombs all over the place, they could build now what 300 fully equipped hospitals, you know. Yeah. And God knows what they could do for the wildlife for the price of one bomber. But um, I heard the expression deer fever once. I, I went to meet my husband in Montana. He was doing. General Custer, and I took the plane in the morning, and a lady next to me, I was dressed in knickers and a fedora, and she thought I was just ter and I thought she was ter and uh, I told her I was going to meet my husband, she said, I'm going to meet mine, and I said, uh, what's he doing, and she said, deer hunting, and I said, why, and she said, well, there are too many deers, and he likes it, and I said, does he, does he really like to do it, and she said, well, now and again, he has deer fever, I think that's the expression she used, and I asked her what it meant, and she said, when a man raises a gun, and if the deer looks at him, he can't shoot. He can't kill the animal for a while. And I thought, is, is that an instinct? Is that as much an instinct as it is to hunt? And if it is, then why don't we kind of give medals and patch on the back for that? That, and we're not, you know, we're not, we don't, we encourage the one end and not the other. And I suspect both exist in us quite strongly. They tell me that with kangaroos. You know, kangaroos lie down and look quite human. And mm -hmm. they can't shoot them. A man quite geared to do it can't. So maybe there is something in us that will help us survive if we encourage it. It's something unique about a deer because it has a plaintive look to oh, it. Yeah. Uh, well, well, I'm told the kangaroo like is, is terrifyingly human yeah, yeah. in its gesture and so on. But the ferocious animals also deserve, the ferocious looking animals also need to be protected. But anyway, the, the, the and your idiot royalty going out and slaughtering, uh, I don't mean your, of course, because you're from you Scotland. But uh, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, not so many years back, you see, recent kings who are proudly posing with 15 corpses of tigers awful, in awful. front of them that they've shot. Oh, disaster. And there are about twice that many left and no, it's well, there's nothing, there's something terrifying, like, like 2,000 uh, uh, royal uh, worn uh, Bengal by tigers left in the world. Yeah. I know, oh, yeah. no, it's, uh, anyway, the, the problem is not known. Yeah. And, and, and Actually, yeah. less actresses are wearing them, it's the society mm -hmm. ladies yes. who say, oh, I've heard all that stuff and no. animals as happy on my back as it was <laughs> in the woods. I, I once had one of me. Not that the animal actually were on her back and not the goat. <laughs> uh, that's a terrible thought. I didn't. We'll be right back <laughs> after this message. Stay where you are. <laughs>